welcome to another one of our videos on Zavanika YouTube channel. My name is Parisa and in today's lesson we are going to learn 30 new verbs, 30 new advanced verbs that you can use in your everyday conversations so you can sound more sophisticated. So let's get started. The first verb is to sip, to sip. To sip something means to drink it in a slow way. Very slow way, like um, when you are doing something else and you are also drinking coffee or tea or whatever that you are drinking, you take small uh, amount of that liquid and that's sipping. Like I usually sip my coffee because I drink it for pleasure because I want to enjoy it more and I want to have it more so I sip my coffee um, or he's sipping his coffee sitting at that table doing his job and while he's doing his job he is also drinking the coffee really slowly to sip okay <clears throat> the second one is to slurp to slurp again this is this means drinking but in a noisy way like okay so if you're drinking and also making a loud noise that's slurping and it's not a very nice thing to do especially if you're someone like me who is um sensitive to that kind of noises um so it's better not to do it but sometimes people slurp or it's just the way that they drink um so if you drink and make noise, you are slurping, to slurp. Okay, to down something. Uh, we usually use this for alcohol, like uh, to down something. It means to drink something all at once, really quickly. So you might go to the bars and tell your friends, down it, down it, down it, down it. It means to drink the alcohol all at once. Or it could be whatever, also, I mean, you can uh, down your coffee, but I mean, don't do that because it's really hot and okay, it's not pretty. <laughs> but if it's iced coffee, I mean, it's your choice. Good. So the next few verbs are related to eating. So instead of eating, you can use a whole range of verbs, which I am going to teach you right now. Um, so the first one is to crunch to crunch. If something is crunchy, you usually crunch while you are eating it. To crunch something, it means to eat it in a very noisy way because the thing that you are eating is um, hard. It's a kind of hard food, such as Cheetos, like mm, not Cheetos per se, but I mean um, chips. Um, so when you are eating them, you're that's that's crunching because well um, you are eating a crunchy food so that's that crunchy adjective to crunch it means to eat in a crunchy way with a lot of noise uh, okay to munch to <laughs> to munch is usually um, uh, well we use it usually for animals it's like eating in a really a slow way like um, Mm, this is not a way that we usually humans eat like um, they don't take their times um, you know eating like mm, but the cows do yeah they munch so um, this is something about we can use it for humans if they are munching but um, we usually use it uh, for cows or horses or animals who munch when they are eating something so yeah to munch Okay, to scuff. To scuff something down your throat, it means to eat it really, really, really quickly. Maybe because you are in hurry or maybe you are in a contest. <laughs> you are in a contest. I'm sorry. Um, so uh, maybe you want to win a prize or something. So you have to scuff something down your throat so that, uh, I don't know, you break the record and be the one that who eats, I don't know, 30 hot dogs in two minutes, something like that. Or maybe you're just going to work or and, and you just scuff your breakfast down your throat. It means to eat it all at once, to scuff. 
to eat something all at once really quickly finish it really quickly to scuff i have to scuff my breakfast every day because i'm late for work okay very good so the next one is nibble to nibble something uh it means to eat it in such a small bites uh, and have many bites like this usually happens when you are uh, cooking or when somebody else is cooking or maybe let's say that they are making french fries and you go and every now and then you just have a, a fry and then you run away and then you have it and then you run away or maybe you are cooking and you just um you nibble you just have a small bites and a lot of bites and at the end you see that you have nothing left and you have to cook it again <laughs> so that's a nibbling or maybe you are at work and you are doing um a lot of stuff and you are multitasking so you can have your lunch um in a small bites and have many bites in order to finish it okay um very nice and the last one which is related to eating to chomp something means to chew it in a noisy way like uh, he's chomping that banana like have a bite and chewing it in a noisy way so to chomp some i'm sorry not champ chomp okay very good the next few verbs are related to ways of walking instead of walking you can use all of these sophisticated verbs so the first one is to stroll to stroll stroll it means to walk for pleasure so you could go for a stroll in an autumn evening because the weather is so nice or you could um stroll with your boyfriend or girlfriend because it just gives you pleasure so it's uh, walking in a slow way in a way that it gives you pleasure is kind of for fun um walking for fun stroll okay stride stride is <clears throat> taking the long steps so usually when you are confident of yourself and you know what you want uh, that kind of affects your way of walking so uh, Mike always strides because he's so confident taking long steps usually the sign of confidence to stride okay the next one is strut now it's kind of similar to stride here but um Strut shows arrogance. Now, if you are confident some sometimes way too much, you um they might say he struts because well he's so arrogant. So uh it's 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 not very nice um to strut. So try not to do it. Stride on the other hand, I think it has a more uh, positive uh, meaning. So that's that. And to swagger, to swagger, it means um, to walk in a very confident way. Um, so when you swagger, it means that you are really happy and you are really confident. Maybe something really nice happened to you that day and you're just swaggering and people can say that you are happy and you have all those good feelings because you are swaggering to swagger. Okay, very good. Now, to dawdle. To dawdle, this happens usually when you don't want to go somewhere and so you take such short steps and uh, you take a long time to go somewhere because usually maybe you don't want to go there or it happens to old people they dawdle my grandmother dawdles because well um her physical health well it's not it's not it's not so good so she has to dawdle but sometimes this happens to teenagers like for example when you wake them up for school they dawdle because they don't want to go uh, so that's that. Uh, now the next few verbs are the way of talking, of speaking to people. So the first one is to yell. To yell is to 
talk to someone in a loud way usually maybe because you're angry or maybe you want to get somebody somebody's attention so you have to yell to yell in a loud way uh, to whisper is So to whisper it means to talk in a really slow way, um, really, really slow um, and really quiet, I'm sorry, really quietly to someone usually like so he was this way. I couldn't I couldn't say what he I couldn't understand what he was saying because he was whispering. Um, so it means to talk in a really quiet way. Okay, very good. To mumble, to mumble, people who mumble, they usually talk really quickly and in a vague way, in an unclear way, that it's just impossible to understand what they are saying. So they are mumbling. It's like, um, why are you doing that? And we're there and I'm, well, I don't know these words, but they, they, they're very good. For, so it, it's hard to understand, you see? I am mumbling. Like, actually, I'm not very good to demonstrate mumbling because maybe sometimes I mumble uh, but I don't know but when you don't understand somebody because he or she is talking in an unclear way um, they, that's mumbling so it's impossible to understand or hard to understand to mumble the last verb for ways of talking to people is to mutter to mutter is to speak in an unclear way usually to yourself so if i do this well i have to do that and i have to go through a whole room and then i have to go to the office and do that paperwork and i have to oh my god i have so much to do and it's unclear i'm talking to myself and i am muttering to mutter the next few verbs are synonyms of having a discussion with somebody so the first one is to debate to debate is to have a discussion about a particular subject and which usually takes long like okay um you can debate over your political views you you can debate over ios or android and you can deba debate on many things actually so to debate to dispute um when you dispute with someone um uh, you uh actually say that you disagree with them you have um another opinion and you disagree and um you want to say that so you dispute with them like no you are wrong this is that's not true this is true that's disputing that's a dispute usually there there could be some anger involved in disputing um dispute okay Co to converse to converse it means to have a conversation like i uh, enjoy the chance of uh, converse with my friends like i enjoy having a conversation with my friends um so that's that it's, it's the verb for conversation um the next one the next few verbs are the synonyms of uh, looking so the first one is to stare to stare is um when you do this for a long time you can stare at somebody you can stare at something maybe because you're thinking or maybe i don't know maybe you like that person or you don't like that person whatever um so if you usually in most cultures when you staring at people it's not a nice thing to do because uh, it makes them uncomfortable so it's not good to stare at people to stare to look at them for a long time to have a glance or to glance at something it means to um look at it quickly like um i glanced at the newspaper today it means i looked at it quickly i didn't read it carefully i, I just glanced at it to glance um uh, peek to peek again is to look at something very quickly but it's usually something that you're not supposed to do you're not supposed to look at so probably you you peek in the doorway like to see what's going on or maybe two people are talking in the other room and you want to know what's going on so you peek 
you yes so that's uh, you, you're not supposed to peek but to look but you peek okay <laughs> Usually when, when we were in high school, we would uh, peek um, at our teacher's room to see what's going on. We're already saying, and um, that's that, okay. So, or peek, peek at uh, your friend's uh, paper in order to cheat. Maybe some people cheat and they, they peek at others' um, exam papers. That's not a nice thing to do, though. But I'm not here to judge. Uh, to glimpse, uh, to glimpse is to look at something for a brief amount of time. Like I uh, glimpsed at um, deer last week. Uh, I it was a glimpse because uh, I glimpsed at it because it ran away very quickly. So uh, uh, I had a chance to glimpse, to glimpse for a short time. Look at something for a short time to gaze. Whoa. Okay, to gaze is usually to look at someone with good feelings, romantic feelings. You can gaze at each other for a long time. Uh, with your mm, partner, you can gaze at each other. And that's a really nice thing to do because uh, uh, it shows that kind of you um, convey your emotions when you gaze at someone like that. It's a good thing. Uh, it's a romantic thing. Okay, very well. The last synonym for uh, looking is to squint. Usually when uh, you are exposed to sunlight and you have to look like this, or maybe you have to wear glasses, but you don't. So when you want to uh, focus on something, you do this, like with your eyes kind of closed like this. Yeah, I, I usually do this because I have to wear glasses and I don't because I don't like them. So that happens. I have to squint. Um, the next verb is the synonym for love. We don't have many verbs in English. I don't know why, but we don't. So it's to adore something. To adore something, it means to love it really um, and admire it. Um, love and admire all together combined is adore. I adore you. It means I love you. Um, or I don't love you, but I admire you. I adore your work. It means I love your work. To adore. The next one is the synonym of hate. To detest. To detest something. It means uh, to hate something very, very much. In a way that, well, uh, you, you don't agree with that person. Or you don't agree with that idea. So you detest it. Okay. Um, I detest uh, many things. Um... I detest the current situation, the financial situations of my country. I don't agree with it. I, I don't like it. I hate it. Okay. So the next one is to despise. To despise something again, it means to hate something very, very much. I despise. Um, what do I despise? I despise um, hypocrites. Loathe. Again, loathe it means to hate something, but I mean, it's a little weaker than despise and detest. Uh, I loathe studying for an exam. Okay. <laughs> to abhor. Again, it means it's a really strong way to say that you hate something. Like, um, for example, I bore studying grammar like I don't like good the grammar part of a language I just like the communication way of uh, the language I, I like to learn new words I like to learn all that but not grammar I bore it okay very good the next few synonyms are about thinking to ponder to ponder something it means to think about it very carefully in a way that you want to review it so you ponder uh, just last week, I had to ponder about the um, discussion I had with my boss uh, because I had to remember what he told me. I, I, I was pondering. Okay, so the next one um, is the verb reckon. To reckon something, it means to think. Like, um, to think about something. Like, what do you reckon about this? It's a synonym of think. What do you think about this? I reckon that'll be good. I think that'll be good. Okay? Reckon. 
to figure something, usually to figure something out, is to try to understand it. Well, I figured how to get home. It means I understood it. I figured. Figure. To exert, the next few verbs are the synonyms of working. To exert, to exert it means to work very, very hard, usually to exert yourself. Uh, I exerted myself last night at gym. It means I worked really, really hard to exert. To toil, well, this is old fashioned. Nobody uses that uses this right now but uh, you may see it in the newspapers or in the books so to toil something is not a good thing it's not a it doesn't have a nice color uh, collocation actually to toil is means work really hard so you could say to toil on uh, uh workers like mine workers it means the hard work of them that they, they usually don't get paid for that job i mean they get paid but it's not enough it's very no. So now let's talk about good things. The next few verbs are the synonyms of enjoy. To relish something. To relish something, it means to enjoy something very, very much. I relish that thought. I mean, I relish that movie. Uh, I don't relish the idea of um, walking at home alone. To relish a thought, to relish an idea, to relish something, it means to enjoy it, to relish. To savor, it means you enjoy it very, very much. That you want to savor it, you, want, you don't want to lose it, you don't, you don't want to lose it very quickly. So you absorb it, you try to keep it to yourself as long as you can. You uh, try to, for example, if you you enjoy your coffee you sip it and you try to savor the taste uh, or savor an experience it means you try to really really be in that moment and don't lose it and don't be distracted to savor something it means to enjoy it so much that you try to keep it as long as you can to bask again it means to enjoy something very very much usually we use it to be in to bask in um i bask in sunlight so the sunlight the morning sunlight to bask in to enjoy something uh the next few verbs are the synonyms of to annoy someone so the first one is to bother if you bother someone you annoy them usually uh, it's, it's pretty simple like um sorry to bother you or i don't want to bother you or he bothers me a lot about that he keeps nagging me bother the next one is to pastor to pastor it it is very strong it means to know something someone very um very much uh, he keeps pastoring me about doing that job like they, they do it on purpose somehow they they, they pastor you uh, so that they do some that you do something about it usually um okay very good to ruffle the next one is this to ruffle um uh, to ruffle somebody's feathers you know feathers um to ruffle somebody's feathers it means to mess with them to annoy them um so um I, he usually ruffles my feathers for sport <laughs> like for fun ruffle somebody's feathers um to exasperate uh, to exasperate it means to annoy something annoy somebody on purpose in order to get a reaction like you're, you're doing that on purpose and you are looking you keep uh, exasperating them in, you keep pastoring them in order to get a reaction like to say you want them to say something bad or you want them to do something to you and you exasperate mm, and the next one again is it's a really easy synonym for uh, annoying some an annoy somebody or some annoy somebody is to irritate like um uh, it keeps irritating me or this situation is really uh, irritating me and um, that's that okay so the next five verbs and the final verbs are the synonyms of touching so to prod something um, or someone it means to touch them really quickly either with your fingers or any part of your body usually 
um, in order to get attention, like to poke them, to uh, prod them um, really quickly. Usually you have to be really comfortable with somebody if you want to prod them, but okay, like that. So to flick, to flick, it's not, it's not nice to flick somebody like it may hurt them, it hurts them. Uh, to flick something, well, yeah. It means to do this with your fingers. Uh, to pinch, it means to apply pressure in it like this. Okay, you somebody can do this to uh, you know um, cause pain or grandpapas or grandmamas or aunties and uncles can do this to little babies. Oh, that's cute, so cute, so cute to pinch. And to, the next two verbs and our final verbs are the synonyms of hugging. To cuddle, it means to hug someone in a tender way. Like you uh, are lying on the sofa and you hug somebody and you stay in that way, so you cuddle. Uh, and to embrace, to embrace again, it means to hug somebody. I embraced him because I missed him so much. Or again, it could be to embrace something. It means to accept something, like to um, accept something fully, like um, embrace a situation, accept a situation. It could mean that as well, to embrace. Okay, thank you for staying with us. Uh, try to use these verbs about yourself. Try to personalize, personalize them and leave them. Uh, leave your sample sentences in the comments. If there are any mistakes, I will correct them. I will check them out. Don't worry about them. This might seem a little bit overwhelming, but I mean, um, this wasn't enough. Go and research it. Um, go search it in dictionary or try to listen for it when you are listening to podcasts or some uh, movies um, like that and try to get yourself familiar with them in order to be able uh, to use it okay thank you for staying with us i know that this was a long video thank you for your patience and best of luck